Good morning everyone. I'm Dr. Ala Musbah, professor of obstetrics and gynecology, faculty of medicine, Mansoura University. Today I want to discuss episiotomy and repair. So what we want to discuss today? Definition, clinical indication for episiotomy, evidence for doing episiotomy, according to guidelines, types of episiotomies, technique, repair of episiotomy, and lastly, the complications. Episiotomy is a surgical incision of the perineum performed to widen the vaginal opening to facilitate the delivery of an infant. Of course, it is a very common procedure used for women worldwide during delivery. What is the clinical indication? Suspected maternal and or fetal compromise delivery needs to be expedited, to be in hurry. Shoulder distortion to aid with performing internal maneuvers. Anticipation of significant perineal and or rectal trauma. And I wanna to focus on these indications. I wanted to shorten the second stage of labor, for example, for many indications. So I may need physiotomy. Also, the recent guidelines said that it is not used as a routine for all cases. So it is for certain indication. So depend on the situation, but it is not used anymore as a routine for non liberal soul. So the evidence for doing episiotomy, there is no evidence to support routine episiotomy for laboring patients. A routine episiotomy is of no advantage to a patient and therefore a clinical need should be identified before one is carried out. The rule of episiotomy for operative vaginal delivery should be evaluated on an individual basis pertaining to each case. So, patient with infibulated genital mutation, mutilation should be informed of the risks of delay in the second stage and the spontaneous laceration together with the need for an anterior episiotomy and the possible need for defibrillation in labor. As you see in this picture, this is the result of genital mutilation. We do anterior episiotomy by cutting this part. Okay? It's called anterior episiotomy. Of course, it is rare type of episiotomy, but it may be needed in this case. So, what are the types of episiotomies? Plug to this table, please. I have median or midline, modified median, J shape, mediolateral, lateral, radical lateral, and anterior. Median between 0 and 25 degree of the sagittal plane, modified median between 0 and 25 of the sagittal plane, with two transverse cuts on each side. G shape at first midline, then J is directed toward the skeletal breast. Mediolateral directed laterally at an angle of at least 60 degree from the midline towards the skeletal breast. And this is the commonest one, by the way, and the recommendation of the guidelines is uh, uh, preferring the mediolateral one. Lateral episiotomy, lateral toward the skeletal breast. Radi radical lateral, laterally toward the ischial porosity and around the rectum. Anterior is the midline, as we mentioned before, midline directed toward the pupus. So we wanted to lock to this picture 
to know all the types of episiotomy in a very clear manner. Okay, median one. Number one, lock to this picture. This is the site of median or midline one. This one. Okay. Modified median. Modified median is number two. I do median like median, but two transverse incision like that. Okay. J-shape, this one, I start in the midline, then complete by G-shape, this one, number three. Mediolateral, the commonest one used in, in practice nowadays and recommended, this when indicated, this one, mediolateral episiotomy. Lateral episiotomy, number five, this one, I started not from the foreshad here, okay, but I started more than 10 millimeter from the foreshad, okay, more than 10 millimeter from the foreshad, then extend laterally toward the escritivorous. Radical lateral, this one, I start more than 10 millimeter from the foreshad and extend toward the escritivorous and around the rectum. This is called radical lateral. Anterior one is directed towards this side. Is this side is the side of adhesions here? I cut it anteriorly in, in, in patient circumcised, as we said before, and the suture post labia together or the remaining part together. So I wanted to cut this area okay to widen the vaginal opening. These are the types, and as you see in this picture also. The commonest really in practice is median episiotomy and the mediolateral episiotomy, so we'll concentrate about this. Median episiotomy as this one in the midline from foreshad in the midline, half of the perineum. So cut the following structures, vaginal mucosa and the foreshad, the vaginal mucosa and the foreshad, skin and the fascia, okay. Perineal body, this is a perineal body. So these are the layers cut, vaginal mucosa, skin and the fascia and the perineal body. Advantage of med median episiotomy, easy, repair is easy and anatomical, less bleeding. What is the disadvantage? May extend to the anal sphincter. As you see, the uh, incision here may extend to the anal Senator, either the external anus factor or injury even to the anal canal. Okay, as you see here, if extended to the anus, it is very dangerous. So, this is a, a, a disadvantage of median episiotomy. So, recommendation prefer the mediolateral episiotomy to avoid this. This is a mediolateral episiotomy, as you see in the picture. We cut here. So, Cut the following structures, vaginal mucosa and foreshad, skin and fascia, superficial and deep transverse perineal muscle, so we cut the skin of the vagina, okay, and the skin and the fascia, of the perineum, then we cut the superficial and the deep transverse perineal muscles, this is the perineal muscles, okay, bulbocavernosus muscle, here and bubo vaginalis muscle here. Advantage avoid extension to the anal sphincter. Of course, we are cutting like that away from the anal sphincter. Disadvantage more difficult and not anatomical one because it is away from the midline. More bleeding, more painful scar. What about the technique? The incision to be used is the mediolateral uh, uh, incision as recommendation set, as it avoid anal sphincter and parcelling glands. So it avoid both of them, anal sphincter and parcelling glands. Before an episiotomy can be performed, the patient's informed consent needs to be obtained and documented. It is recommended that pain relief such as local anesthetic should be 
provided before an episiotomy. Infiltration of the perineum. How to do infiltration of the perineum? As we see in the picture, this is infiltration of the perineum, this one. If there is time and the patient can safely have lidocaine, then 10 milli of 0.5% or 5 milli of 1% lidocaine should be drawn up. Two finger enter the vagina along the proposed line for the episiotomy to protect the presenting part period infiltration. So we insert two finger here to protect the presenting part, then inject. Okay. Using a green needle, insert needle into the middle of the forchette. Slowly withdraw the plunger of the syringe to ensure that the needle hasn't entered a vein. If blood is aspirated, reposition the needle until no blood withdrawn. Release one third of the lidocaine as the syringe partially withdrawn from the forchette. So we insert the, for the needle in the forchette here. Then we withdraw to be sure that we are not inside the vein. Then withdraw the needle and release one third of the content of the syringe. Okay, before needle completely removed from the forchette, tilt it so it is at the position where the incision will be made. So I'll direct the direction of the needle toward the side of the incision. Okay, from inside and then finally tilt the syringe to the other side of the proposed incision and to give the final dose of the lidocaine. So one third of the dose of the lidocaine at the forchette, as we said, then another third in the direction of the epizotomy from the inner side, then the opposite side, the last third of the lidocaine solution in the cell. Then incision of the perineum. Please look to this picture. This is uh, a epizotor uh, 60. Epicisor 60, this one and this one, with this guide directed toward the anus and this angle, make sure that it is 60, per, uh, 60 degree, okay? So, all episiotomies are to be completed with epicisor 60 because it makes it easy. A mediolateral episiotomy should be done. This should originate at the vaginal forchette and usually be directed toward the right side. The angle of episiotomy cut should be at 60 degree to the midline as this one cutting di uh, diagonally from the vagina toward the woman's right side and the back of her body so incision of the perineum again two fingers enter the vagina along the proposed line for obesitomy uh, uh, to protect the presenting part Okay, period and the during insertion of a scissor. The scissor should be lined up with the guide limb pointing towards, this is the guiding limb, pointing toward the anus, okay, in the vertical plane. So, this guide me, because this guide directed toward the anus, so I am now 60 degree, I am now sure I am in the proper position. The scissor blades constantly maintain a 60 degree angle from the guide limb. The flexible nature of the guide accommodate the spherical distension at crowning. The cut should also be done at the height at the height of contraction when tissues are stretched the most and with pressure of the presenting part bleeding is more likely to be less severe. So, during contraction and the stretch of the perineum, this makes the bleeding is less. The cut should be four to five centimeters long and pores of the presenting part should follow immediately and therefore its advance need to be controlled with manual perineal protection to avoid the episiotomy from extending. 
documentation should be done and the record the indication for performing an episiotomy, the pain relief administered, the technique and the type of incision performed. So, what is needed to be ready during repair of episiotomy? I need the following trial su uh, suture, delivery pack, suture instrument set, 20 ml syringe, green needle, red needle, obstetric cream, clean tap water, lidocaine 1%, sterile gloves, Vicry Rabbit 0 or 2, 0. 1 to 2 packets. So, as you see in the picture, this is the technique of the repair. Swap perineum with ghost sock in clean tap water. A continuous non-locking suture technique used to opposite each layer by interrupted may be used if clinical judgment requires. The, uh, then tie off separately any bleeding points with loop suture. Identify apex of the tear or uh, sorry or episiotomy. Insert first the suture above apex of tear and the tie a knot. So I'll start above the apex of the episiotomy. It is very important. And the tie a knot. Avoid placing first stitch too deep. Remember, there is close proximity to the rectum. So to avoid injury of the rectum or passing the suture through the wall of the rectum. Close posterior vaginal wall using continuous non-locking sutures, vector rabbit to zero on a tape cut needle. So I'll use cutting needle. Okay. And I'll start with the vaginal wall, posterior vaginal wall, continuous suturing and the non-locking. As it exists in picture, this is the apex. So I'll start above the apex here. As you see here, this part, I'll start here. I'll close the vagina by continuous suturing. Okay, as you see in this picture. With vector wrap. Continuous suturing until the enteroitis is reached using the hymenal remnants as a landmark. So I'll complete the vaginal wall here, as in the picture, till reaching the uh, high mineral remnant. This is a landmark that the posterior vaginal wall is future. Okay, then bring the needle through the tissue underneath the high mineral ring into the muscle layer. Then pass the needle, okay, in the muscle layer here. Then define the depths of the wound to close the perineal body or the muscle layers with continuous non locking suture. Again, continuous suture in the perineal muscle. So I passed the, uh, the needle here to be in this part and the, uh, repair the perineal muscles by continuous suture. Close the perineal skin. This is the last step using continuous subcuticular or interrupted transcutaneous suture. As this picture you see here, we suturing now this skin either continuous subcuticular or interrupt. A continuous non-locking suture is associated with less short-term bear compared to traditional interrupted missile. Check vagina, ensure it easily admit to finger so you didn't close the enteritis too much. Perform a rectal examination to check for any sutures that may have penetrated the rectal mucosa, of course, we said there is close proximity, so I wanted to be sure that I didn't suture the wall of the rectum with me. If this happened, I should release this stitches immediately. Okay, so be sure not to take a, a big depth, so to avoid injury of the rectal mucosa. Consider to give non steroidal anti inflammatory uh, Subsidiary in the rectum, Voltarine 100 mg per rectum for analgesia if there is no contraindication. Clean the perineum and apply antiseptic solution and place a sterile bed in situ. So, lastly, what are the complications of the episiotomy? 
we have two major items early complications or late complications like pain hemorrhage wound site edema wound site infection anal sphincter and rectal mucosal injury perineal lacerations urethral injury hematoma formation or episiotomy dehiscence this is for early complication what about the late complication pain chronic infections urinary incontinence pelvic organ prolapse sexual dysfunction and lastly anorectal dysfunction and this is my last slide thank you i'm dr ala musbah professor of obstetrics and gynecology faculty of medicine Mansour university see you in another lecture too